My name is Bin, and I'm the, the pastor at Sun Life Church. It is so good to have you here. Uh, I just want to say thank you so much for making the effort to, uh, to be in Leaderville to join us for our special Good Friday service. Uh, as you take your seat, if you feel comfortable, why don't you say hi to someone next to you, uh, and then I'll come back and we'll open up the Word of God together. You know, today's a very good day. Today's a, a very good day. And um, one of the questions I do get asked quite often is, is, why is today a good day? Why is Good Friday a good day? And there are many reasons why today is a good day. Let me give you a few reasons why. Uh, first of all, it's a, it's a public holiday, right? And that makes it a very good day. Amen. I mean, thank God that it's a public holiday and uh, we get to slow down, we get to enjoy our family and friends, we get to just take it easy, and uh, we get to be here as brothers and sisters in the Lord to, I guess, take the day off. So that makes today a, a good day. Another reason why it's a good day is because it's Friday. Friday is always a good day. What's that catchphrase? Thank God for Friday, right? We all struggle with Monday. We don't like Monday, but we love Friday, and Friday is a, a very good day. Here's number three. Well, it's the start of the long weekend. Now, that's a very good reason to celebrate. Amen? We get not only three days, but we get four days. So we get Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Take a sneaky sick day on Tuesday. You get a whopping five days. What a great weekend. Number four. A Jewish man died, crucified on the cross some 2,000 years ago. In fact, that's the reason why today is a good day, because someone died 2,000 years ago. Crucifixion was reserved for the worst of the worst. It was the most shameful kind of death for the worst of the worst. You may know this, the criminal is nailed to a cross with his arms stretched on either side, his feet also nailed but slightly bent at 45 degrees. And they do that so that the legs could not hold up the weight of the body. But if the legs happened to hold up the weight of the body, they would break the legs, shatter the legs, so that now nothing can hold the weight of the body. What was only left would be the arms. And so the arms now would hold up the weight of the body to a certain point where the arms can no longer do this job. So now we're left with the chest cavity to hold up the weight of the body. With the exertion on the chest, this would constrict breathing. And eventually the criminal would die through suffocation. It's a slow, it's a painful death. And the Romans used it as a warning. This will be your consequences if you step out of line. You see, Good Friday is all about that death, that Jesus died for sinners. The Apostle Paul, he writes this to Timothy. He writes in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15, Here is a trustworthy saying, that deserves full acceptance. Jesus died. See, Christ came into the world to save sinners. That's why today is a good day. You know, I love a good uh, rescue movie. I don't know about you, but there are many great rescue movies out there, whether it's Saving Private Ryan or my all-time favorite will be uh, Taken, starring uh, Hollywood superstar Liam Neeson. Now, for those who haven't seen it, let me tell you what this movie is all about. His young daughter and her best friend, they are abducted, kidnapped on their trip to 
France. Now, the father, played by Liam Neeson, he has 96 hours to find and save his daughter. Otherwise, he would lose her forever. And in the movie, there's this famous line where Liam is on the phone with the abductors, and he's so determined to find his daughter. And he says this. I'm not going to do it in an accent. He says this. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. If you're looking for ransom, I can tell you I have no money. But what I do have are some very particular sets of skills. Skills that will make me a nightmare for people like you. If you let my daughter go now, that'll be the end of it. I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. But if you don't, I will look for you. I will find you. And I will kill you. And the spoiler alert, if you know the movie, is that he does everything possible. He travels to the ends of the earth to find his daughter, to rescue her, and takes her home. You see, Good Friday is good because Jesus goes to the extreme, to the point of death, to get us home to our Father. That's why it's a good day. And I want to read you Paul's writing to explain you why it's a good day. In Colossians chapter 2, verses 13 to 15, let me read the word of God. Paul says, And you who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him. Heaven forgiven us all our trespasses by cancelling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authority and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. See, there's three things that I see in the text that makes today a very, very good day. And I want you to see these things. And I want you to walk away remembering that Jesus did this for us. And this is why today is a good day. The very first thing is this, is that on that day, that very good Friday, our death died. Your death, my death died. Look in verse 13 again. And you who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses. The Bible talks of three types of death. You may know these three types of death. There is the physical death, and this is the one where the spirit is separated from the body. And every one of us, we have to face this death. There is a day where your spirit and the physical will be separated. That's a given. The second death is a spiritual death. And because we are all born into a broken world, a fallen world, spiritually we are separated from God. We are separated from God spiritually, and we all, believe it or not, have to realize that that is us. And thirdly, there is an eternal death, and this is when the body, with the spirit, separated from God forever, eternally. It's an unending separation. And in the text here in Colossians 2, Paul is not referring to the physical death, He's not referring to the eternal death, but rather the spiritual death. And he says, because we have trespassed, we're all spiritually dead. Trespass means we've actually crossed the boundaries of someone's property. For example, if I were to go to your house without asking for permission, go straight to your kitchen, go straight to your kids, your, 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 your fridge and grab some food and eat without asking for permission, I have what? Trespassed your property. I have violated your boundaries. And that's the same with God. We trespass and we violate God's boundaries and laws because of our wrongdoing. And because God is a holy God and He's a perfect God, any violation is an offense to God which leads to death. And Romans 6.23 is very clear. For the wages of sin is death. And this death here is a spiritual death. We're all separated from God. But on that first Good Friday, 
The Bible is very clear that God made us alive. We're alive. We're no longer dead. We are made alive. That's why it is a good day. The Christian faith is this, not that God made us good. The Christian faith is that God made us alive. We were dead, dead in our sins. And on that first Good Friday, on the cross, God made us alive, which meant that our death also died with him. That's what he's done for you. And that's what he's done for me. And the wonderful thing is that we don't have to fear about any form of separation between us and God. Spiritual death is not something we have to worry about. And here's the good news. Because we are made alive in Jesus, we live with him forever. Therefore, the eternal death doesn't apply to us. That's why it is a Good Friday. No longer a fear of separation between us and God because our death died with him. He has made us alive. If you place your trust in Jesus, you have the confidence to know that your spiritual death, your eternal death died with him on that cross and you do not have to fear about that. That's why it is a good day. And that's a decision that we all have to make. And Paul says this to Timothy in his second letter. In 2 Timothy 1, he says this, But it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. That's the very first thing. Our death died with him on that first Good Friday. It's a great day. If you place your trust in him, you don't have to worry about the spiritual death. You don't have to worry about the eternal death because it died with Jesus on the cross. That's the very first reason. The second reason is that our debt on that day, deleted. Deleted. Wiped clean. Look in verse 14. By cancelling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross. You know why it's a good day? Because on the cross, our debt cancelled, deleted, wiped, clean. The Greek word for debt here literally means a receipt. It's a receipt. It's a list of items. You know, you go to a restaurant and you're ordering some food. I don't know. I mean, I'm Vietnamese. I love my Vietnamese food, whether it's a bumbo way or a pho đặc biệt or a bánh xèo, whatever it is, right? At the end of the day, you go to the counter, and what do you receive? A bill, a receipt, and there's a list of all the items you've purchased that evening, all your food and all your drinks and all your desserts, and everything is on that receipt. And guess what? Someone has to pay for it. If no one pays for it, you roll in the kitchen, cleaning the dishes, right? Someone has to pay for it. Friends, listen carefully. Every time we do something we should not do, every time we say something we should not say, every time we think of something we should not think, everything that is evil towards God or one another, we find it on this receipt. It's on this receipt. And the longer you live, the longer this receipt becomes. I know that my debt is quite long. I know that you have probably done things where you're ashamed of. And it's on this receipt. And the Bible talks about how this receipt, it accuses us, it condemns us. It points its finger at us and says, look at you, look how bad you are. Look how unworthy you are. And this receipt here is pointing at us, saying you are unworthy, you deserve condemnation. But on that Good Friday, friends, our debt deleted. The Bible is very clear right here. He cancelled everything we have done. Everything, all our wrongdoings, our mistakes, our sins, our shortcomings, clean as a whistle. No record at all as if nothing has ever taken place. That's why it's a Good Friday. Our debt deleted. Clean as a whistle. 
as his blood was poured out for us, it was as if our debt were being deleted one at a time. And today, you and I, we stand pure and holy, not because of what we have done. No, because he died on that first Good Friday. That's why I love that hymn from Robert Lowry, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sin? See, nothing but the blood of Jesus. You know, what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And he says, oh, precious is the flow. And the flow there is the blood that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. And that's why today is a good day. Because someone died. And as the blood poured out, our debt wiped clean, deleted. That's why it's a good day. And if you and I, we place our trust in Jesus, we have the confidence to know that anything that's hanging over us, it's there no more. He doesn't remember it anymore. He's wiped it clean. We're now innocent. We are pure. We stand before a holy God knowing that when He sees us, He sees Jesus because we're in Jesus and He sees His perfect Son. And because we're in Him, He sees us as being Perfect, pure, holy, debt-free. That's why it's a good day. The prophet Isaiah, he says this in Isaiah 43, verse 25. He says, God, I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. I love that about Jesus, that he does everything for us. That's why it's the good news. It's not about what we must do or what we must think or what we must say. It's all about what He did for us on that cross. And because He died for us and we find ourselves in His death, our death died with Him and our debt is now deleted. Therefore, we stand innocent, pure, holy, guilt-free before our Creator. That's why... Today is a good day. Number three. And that day, the devil disarmed. He was disarmed. Look in verse 15. He, that is Jesus, disarmed the rulers and the authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him. The word disarm here means to be stripped off to be made naked. So we see right here that the rulers and the authorities, they were stripped off and they were naked. They stood ashamed. And here's the irony of the cross. Listen carefully. Here is the irony. Is that where Jesus hung naked, humiliated in front of many, the devil and the demons thought they won. They thought they destroyed Jesus without realizing they were the one stripped naked they were the one put to shame they were the one humiliated the devil was disarmed on that day the language here we see in verse 15 talks of a roman victory parade see in those days when the general would defeat the enemies what the general would do was not kill the enemies the general would tie them up strip them naked, and bring them back into the city. And as they would parade these captives, defeated captives, naked and ashamed throughout the city, it was a public spectacle with the intention to embarrass and shame the enemy. And the general would say this to the people, remember our enemies, the ones who taunted us, the one who threatened us, the one who mocked us, the one who terrorized us, they intimidated us. Look at them today. Look at them today. They're all chained up. They are weak. They have no power. They have no authority. They are naked. They have been disarmed today. They can do nothing to us. We are victorious, not them. That's the language in verse 15. And what we see on the cross on that great day 
the devil was disarmed on the cross. That means for you and I today, we have no fear with what the devil is up to. No fear. The devil has no say over our lives. The devil has no say over our future. Our future is kept secured by the grace and the love of God. If you place your trust in Jesus, you know that the devil has no say over your existence. Do you know why? Because on that great day, the devil, his demonic forces, disarmed. Disarmed. Greater is he who is in me than he in the world. Which means because today I have Jesus, the devil has no say. I'm not afraid. I don't walk in fear. My future is kept secured by God. I am victorious. Why? Because the enemy has been defeated. Disarmed. That's why today is a great day. Our death died. Our debt deleted. Demon disarmed. It's a great day. And for those who know this, for those who place their faith in Jesus, wow, this is a good day. That I don't have to worry about any form of death. Spiritual death means nothing to me. Eternal death is nothing because I get to enjoy Jesus not only today, but forevermore. Oh, death, where is your sting? Where is your victory? No fear. All my debt, all my wrongdoings, all my mistakes, all my shortcoming, all my sin, deleted, wiped clean, white as snow because the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm not walking around feeling guilty. I'm not walking around feeling condemned because I know in Christ there's no condemnation. I am innocent. I am clean. I am pure. My debt deleted. And finally, oh, demonic forces, the devil, the demon, disarmed. Disarmed. No say over me. I belong to God's kingdom. I belong to God. I am kept safe by God. The devil has no say in my existence, in my future. God does. Therefore, I walk victoriously. And I can point and say, look at the accuser. You're naked. Oh, you're an embarrassment. Shame on you. I'm on the team that is victorious. That's why today is a great day. And for those who place their trust in Jesus, you have those three assurances. Death died. Debt deleted. Devil disarmed. That's yours to keep. That's why today is a great day. And I love the fact that God welcomes every one of us back to his table and maybe for some you want to do business with God and you need to do business with God and you might say well Ben I I want to be included I, I want to be included into God's kingdom God's family I, I want to know that you know I'm secured with God and there's no fear of any spiritual or eternal death I want to be included well, Pastor, I have a lot of issues, a lot of sins and mistakes. I want to be forgiven. I want it to be deleted. I want to be included. Well, Pastor, I, I want to know that God is going to help me through this. Because at times I feel that the devil has got the upper arm. I want to be known by God and God's going to keep me safe. I want to be included. That's what I love about the gospel. It's always an invitation for us to come back home, to know that Jesus went to the extreme to bring us back home to our Father. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to ask us to close our eyes as I invite anyone here on this day where you say, actually, I need to come back home. I need, I need Jesus. I want to place my faith in Jesus. Maybe that is you. Maybe right now God is doing something in your heart and you're here because 
God is reminding you how much He loves you. That He gave up His Son to go to the point of death to take you back home to Him. So this morning, you are like, well, Pastor, I'm so far from God. I want to return home. I want to receive Jesus into my life. I'm sick and tired of this life trying to do this and do that. I just want to be kept secure by God. I'm so sorry. And on this day here, I want Him into my life. What I want to do is I want to pray for you. And I believe that as I pray for you, God will do something supernaturally. And so to help me know who I'm praying for, all I want is for you to just raise your hand so I can see you. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to get you to come forward. I just want to pray for you and I want to know who I'm praying for. So if that is you this morning and you're like, I want Jesus. I need Jesus. I've done a lot of bad things and I want Jesus to delete all my debt, wipe out all my sins. I want to have a life with Him as of this point and into eternity. I would love to pray for you. So if that is you this day, would you please just raise your hand so I know who I'm praying for. If that is you, you say, Jesus, I I need you. I want you in my life. If you do not know Jesus, and you haven't placed your faith in Jesus, and on this day you say, yep, I want Jesus. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to pray for you. If that is you, can you raise your hands right now? To anyone? Thank you. I will pray for you. Anyone else? As I pray this prayer, I want you to repeat this prayer. If that is you who needs Jesus, I want you to repeat this prayer with me right now. Let's pray. Dear God, I am so sorry. I'm so glad you came for me. I place my faith and my trust in you this day. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for wiping clean my mistakes, my sins, my shortcoming. Thank you for the promise that I get to enjoy you forevermore. Holy Spirit, will you take over my life? Rule and reign in me from this day onwards. I surrender my life to you. I believe in you. Thank you, Jesus. In your name I pray. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer and you really meant it, I I want you to know that today is a good day for you. Because on this day, You've placed your faith in Jesus and your death died. Your debt deleted. The demon been disarmed and that's also for you. If you prayed that prayer, I I would love to help you with your next step and how you can keep following the ways of Jesus. Because I believe that we're all on a journey of following Jesus. Amen.